Hi, my name is Tim and I'm one of the co-founders of Copernicus and uh, our claim is we enable AI-based uh, self-driving on today's cars. Um, so uh, there's also like the one big question um, that can be read here. Okay, will do Google do to cars what they have done to the phone industry? Um, and that is basically completely change all the rules and completely dominate and what the feature set on all the phones will and basically dictate what will be deployed on cars. Or is there any, any possibility for the car industry, which is a little bit behind, to actually, uh, to actually catch up? So um, being a, a Berlin-based uh, company, obviously we, we are focusing on the German car manufacturers first. And, um, and our mission is to enable AI-based self-driving on European zero production cars today. So we don't believe in, in long-term stuff, so we're not a research or a company, or we're not a car manufacturer that says in 10 years we'll have something. Uh, we want to do it today, and we want to do it with the existing cars that we have. So um, a new concept needed to be, how can we bridge the world of AI, which is software development, classical software development, and the car, the traditional car industry, uh, which is protocols like Canvas and FlexRay that a normal software developer has never heard of, with security aspects that a car manufacturer has, uh, has and a software developer normally doesn't care about. Um, so we came up with the concept of a middleware which basically brings together the, um, the software that is integrated into the middleware and the middleware that talks to the car, and the middleware manages everything. But it's not just a development kit, but it's actually something that operates throughout the entire life cycle of the car, understanding in which situation is the car, which kind of software update does it need, is it actually geographically in the UK, so it needs a left-hand self-driving software, or is it going through the Euro tunnel to Europe, driving in France on the right-hand side, which also might be a slightly different self-driving system than what you would need in, for Italian traffic. So ultimately, there'll be several self-driving systems running on exactly the same car or the same self-driving software running on multiple cars, an end-to-end -end relationship. And if you have a management platform of this sort and not a fixed standard integration like car manufacturers have so, so far, there are multiple aspects of how you can actually improve. Um, already today, increase efficiency. I'm going to talk about that uh, in a minute. Obviously, have self-driving car developers develop on your cars and then enable more and more level three, level four, level five autonomy services on top. This is obviously deep tech, auto stuff. This is not something that the end customer sees, but hopefully experience. So um, when, we, when we came out of stealth this summer, we thought, okay, the car manufacturers are either sue us or ignore us, but they were actually the first ones to call us for, their serv for our services. And we were actually quite stunned because the companies that claim they can do self-driving car themselves actually need solutions right now. What was what they needed? They need something that runs on their production facilities today and for the upcoming years before they actually have self-driving cars. So there's a large production facility in, in Germany, um, the Volkswagen factory in Wolfsburg, and it's no secret that they have 4,000 drivers employed. 4,000. You make the math how much that is in annual salaries for people just picking up a car at the end of the production line and then driving it to a logistics hub, which is two, three, five miles on the same premise. So this is something um, that is kind of the first use case that we're implementing, and we're actually implementing it right now with one uh, German car manufacturer, um, where we bring the middleware into the car and have developed a really, really low uh, technological footprint to be installed on the car. And the benefits are obviously huge cost savings for the manufacturer and for us to get the manufacturer familiarized with actually self-driving car tech on their cars today and hopefully make them believe more and more that actually AI software companies can deliver good services on their cars. Um, obviously, OEM facilities I talked about, this could be a solution that can be extended to valet parking. And once the cars have enough sensors and regulation is there, obviously level three, four, five, so hands off the wheel uh, and consumer products can be developed based on this platform. The competitive landscape uh, is surprising, especially for the, the off-board solutions. So on-premise is still surprisingly low when it comes to uh, the technology. So there's maybe 150 self-driving software development companies for level four and five, and the ones that everybody talks about, and 
all of them, I mean, the biggest one obviously Google, but other companies as well, well funded. But here we're only competing against a few companies that are in the self-parking self space, more to speak. Um, uh, the uh, the big, uh, black E-class is, for example, uh, a Bosch product, valet parking. Um, our roadmap looks like this. We're currently deploying with the first OEM as a proof of concept. We'll have probably the first small plant live next year, where basically the cars are driven off the production facility, but not yet in like 40 second cycles, but slower cycles. Um, in 2004, we'll have more features and hopefully more plants where we can actually install it. That means uh, for us software uh, licensing revenues. Um, we are, uh, as probably all startups that are pitching here, we are looking for funding. Um, we, uh, we prefer to have somebody uh, approach us for an investor or talk to investors that actually understand the automotive space. Otherwise, we've had discussions why AI is actually better than rule-based. So if an investor is not at that stage, it's just not helpful to, for, to, for either side to actually do it. So if somebody is in the outer space and likes the field, um, then we're really, really happy to talk. We're currently raising a round of about two and a half million. Um, we have first revenues, as I said, and uh, we, we are trying to close our round still this year. So uh, in short, um, why will there be AI in the future? AI is uh, the most powerful solution. Uh, there will never be self-driving cars fully autonomous that are rule-based. Um, the traditional car makers are slow. And once that the AI wave actually hits it, also from the regulation, they will not be prepared. We'll be there and happy to help. Ladies and gentlemen, hands together for Copernicus Automotive. <laughs>